Food has long been a connector of cultures. One that feeds the body in its barest form and fuels camaraderie on a higher social level. This season, we explore the role of food in our Asian culture in connecting people and forging friendships. We flew in Michelin-starred chefs from Singapore and Bangkok to be part of our Malaysian eating cultures and share with them our dining scene, both street and fine. We call it here in Banji. Well, this one has a chewiness. Very well done, very well done. To exchange and learn how differently we eat and, more importantly, how much likeness we also share. This is Chef on Chef 3, Crossing Borders. When it comes to good food, whether for a quick lunch bite or a fancy dinner, Sage Restaurant and Wine Bar on the sixth floor of the Gardens Mall has been a perennial favorite for those living in KL and its surroundings. The restaurant, helmed by talented chef Daniel Cheong and his team, has built a trusted reputation for itself over the years with its excellent French-Japanese Nouvelle Cuisine, served amidst a contemporary and chic ambiance. Complementing its award-winning dishes is a respectable wine list of over 300 labels, exclusively sourced and made available for each dining soiree by Sage's resident sommelier. Let the Sage come with different design of the piece of my palate taste, my creation, through the ingredients I know from the Asia country as well too, uh, from the European. From that, I come up with different idea. Because I do more of my cooking, more to the Malaysian taste. Flying in for a taste of what Sage has to offer is Chef Heikel Johari from one Michelin star Alma by Juan Amador from Singapore. The genial Chef Heikel may surprise those meeting him for the first time. The wheelchair he shows up in is testament to his spirit and tenacity in overcoming odds stacked against him. A motorcycle accident in 2015 left him paralyzed from the shoulders down. So 2015, while going to the racetrack itself, you know, I had an accident, which till now, after four years already, I still could not remember what happened at all. And then I was in coma for maybe almost two days. And then when I woke up, the doctor just told me that, uh, you know, that I'm going to be paralyzed from my neck down, like, for all my life, you know. That was the toughest uh, uh, thing that happened to me throughout my this 20 over years of uh, uh, being a chef. But he defied his fate and worked his way back into the kitchens through vigorous rehabilitative physiotherapy. Today, he has regained mobility in his hands, returned to his rightful place in cooking and serving up good food, and even earned himself a Michelin star. Hi, good evening. Thank you, how are you? For dinner, Chef Heikel and his wife, Madame Rafika, are ready to meet Chef Daniel and his team. It was a surprise when I came because it's like suddenly, you know, from below is a service apartment or a residence. And you come and you have very big space for very good food. I think the whole experience has been, been good. Chef Daniel has crafted a special menu for the evening one which he calls the Craftsman's series of his best dishes, ranging from sweet seafood to full-bodied red meat. It's time to fire the first course. Welcome to Sage. Good evening. My Thank name you. is Harin. I'm the uh, Sage Wine Director. Pleasure to have you. Let me explain you the menu sure. briefly. Thank you. So this is Chef Daniel's uh, The Craftsman series. The menu starts with an amouche-bouche of crispy oyster ravioli with balsamic sauce. A succulent Irish oyster is deep-fried for crunch before being served with a dash of Chef Daniel's house-made balsamic sauce. It almost, it almost tastes like wonton, yeah, but it's not, I, I, I don't know. It's a, a very interesting uh, 
texture because it's uh, crispy. And the dough is, I've, I've, I've never tasted a dough like this before. Uh, it's very simple, quite classic. Acidic, sour, you know. I mean, for the first course, I think it goes very well. The first course brings to the table a delicious yellowtail sashimi, served with a special house-made emulsion of white truffle oil from Italy. Completing the luxe dish are uni sea urchin and ossietra caviar. I think it's a very fresh fish. You can see, right, shiny uh, glaze on the scale itself. Most chefs will use the traditional one in the, in the wooden box, right? But I like this flavour more. They are very fresh. They just wash with a bit of uh, water and salt. Whereas the other kind of sea urchin, they've been soaked in some uh, uh, chemical, right, to harden, to make them harder so they can last longer. But this one will taste much more fresh. So I'm surprised that uh, he's using uh, this uh, sea urchin from Hokkaido. Smells good, eh? Okay. That's your request. Thank you so much. Nice. With the truffle soil. Please enjoy. Thank you. Well, uh, I can smell the truffle oil. Can it gets the nod from Chef Heichel as well. I think very fresh. Yeah, uh, everything is everything is absolutely like top notch uh, freshness. I think it all uh, is balanced because of the sauce. The sauce has some acidity on it, right? And also the truffle oil plays a very uh, nice uh, bridge for all these ingredients together, right? And I think it's like I say, like because of the freshness of the the three ingredients. It's, it's really good, yeah, very good. All his menu from, derived from him. Oh. So, whichever the vintage menu that you're looking at, because as I said, he's been for 30 years, and uh, he began to craft his menus two decades ago. And then he only do for a special location. So what happened, he been sought after these menus, so we wanted to do it back. So it's more likely a refreshment for him, as well for the restaurant. I think I think this kind of flavors will work well with uh, Asians. Yes. Yeah. Very, because very Asian well, prefer yeah. more bit of a, you know it's like as for me I always relate Sauvignon Blanc. It's more crisp lemon lime justy character. Yeah. So it goes very well. It, this menu was around in 2008, so now it's 2019 really. I think he should bring all the old dishes back. <laughs> Compliments to the chef, thank you so much. Pleasure indeed. Lobster comes into play for the third course. So this is a hotate, we call Japanese scallop. Okay, from Hokkaido, a size is large, large size, this is the one bigger size. And now one we get this is the second large, now one more larger, this is considered now. Main lobster is steam baked in a cast iron pot in its own juices and a splash of chicken stock. It is then served with seared hotate scallops from Hokkaido and a rich and fragrant taraco butter sauce. This is one of the Chef Daniel's uh, classic dish. Please enjoy. Thank you. Because it's made, for, it's actually steamed in a cask iron. So you trap all the juice and the flavor within the shell. So, so the, 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 the scallops and also the lobsters are... Eat away. Baked together. Baked wow. together. So we started this with the fish, in fact. We did a trial run with fishes. And then um, this is our new creation. We, we used to do this with Chef uh, Ken right. back in cilantro more than uh, two decades ago. Wow. So we're doing it here. The sauce are diluted, so this is the natural flavor. Thank Please you. enjoy. Very good, very natural flavor. And I think the the the, high, the star is the seaweed. The seaweed on the dish, I think, actually give it that the extra umami flavor, yeah. It's a very simple dish, but so good. Its simplicity in preparation, yet immense resultant flavors, wins its points from Chef Heichel once again. Very good. 
and also chef also do I mean uses the the roe or the lobsters also in the sauce also yeah, so that adds that brininess yeah, of the sea yeah, very good it's very well thought of you know using the the rows and everything is very good but for, I mean just just that I mean if chef were to use the European lobsters I think it would be like it's easily a two or three star Michelin dish eh? yeah. okay I think chef is very experienced right to show that chef have a very great skill in you know mixing the flavors yeah, I think that's define a good or a, a chef wanna be here <laughs> the next course brings yet another seafood dish Chef, so this one you prepare, you prepare and uh, serve it to him. Oh, yes. How many minutes do you need, Chef? Five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah. Wait, let me check first and I'll get back to you. This time being the Japanese kinky rockfish, prized for its smooth, fatty white flesh, and Australian geoduck. Chef Daniel prepares both a la muniere, basting it patiently with lots of butter. It is served on a bed of crunchy pea shoots and a sweet shellfish reduction. Tinti fish is actually quite, it's, it's a stewed fish. Eh? It works very well when, with the bone intact. Yeah, so once the bone, when you feel them like this, right? Sometimes it might get chewy. I think with chef experience, you know, I think it, it, it's gonna be, we'll see, yeah. Hi chef. <laughs> very good chef. Yeah, wow. Good stuff, chef. It's it's been it's been wow so far, how, chef. How so far the, the food? Oh very good, very, very good. Like yeah, we like it a lot. Yeah. Oh thank you very much. Chef. I think the so, flavors are very, very uh, on the spot. Good. <laughs> very, very good. So why I love I say I'm so sure because I love the mix sauce. Ah. Whatever sauce you talk about the uh, any starter course, uh, all the sauce, French all the French sauces, sauce, right? Yeah, French yeah. sauces you're making. I like to learn, I like to, to taste it because I love to eat. As well today the sauce I uh, talk about this fish. Uh, Using the, the kinky fish, one of the Japanese. Uh, uh, I choose, choose the small size because I like the taste more smaller. Bigger size, a bit. Um, I don't like so much. So this is size of this one is a small size. It's a called kinky, and then it's like what's called a red rock fish in there by the in Japan. So then the, the bottom will be there using the uh, middle guy. So Japanese middle guy. Then we always eat using the snow peas vegetable sauce. Is one thing for me that I think the reduction of the shellfish, mm -hmm. the lobster head. Sometimes the crab, similar bush, similar crab, uh, crab shell as well too. Miro so guy is the Jodak. Oh, Jodak clam. Jodak. Okay. This Jodak. So the musi fish is more creamy, and the Jodak more sweet, mm. and the sauce is the creamy sweet. So it's a very natural flavor. I love these flavors. <laughs> In fact, he make my life easier to pair wines. Yeah, I think yeah, these are very very easy yes. to pair. Yeah. In, he made my life very easy. <laughs> Please thank enjoy. You. As well. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a bit of bone. That is actually a no-no in fine dining on the bone because the bones are very small, right? Some people may have just uh, choked on it already. But other than that, the fish is, uh, I think the gyoda was like, wow. And the sauce, like Chef said, right? She's very interested in sauces. The fish, uh, like I say, I said before, right? Uh, kinky is very quite sensitive. When you cook them without the bone, it was a little, it will get a little bit, I would say like dry. If it was me, clams. But the fish, maybe I will bake them whole in salt, right? In that way, it retains all the flavor of the fish. But this is also, no doubt, another, another very good dish, yeah. yeah. The small hiccup did not detract from the overall positive impression of the dish. For the main dish, Chef Daniel serves up a prized cut of Japanese beef, lightly seared and served with its natural jus. Accompanying it is a yuzu kosho paste that will lift flavors with its citrusy freshness, potatoes and Brussels sprouts. The yuzu kosho paste wins big points in cutting through the oiliness of the beef, just as intended. Well, I think the, like what Chef say, right? The beef, the technique, it's uh, actually Japanese beef, you cannot sit on a very high heat, right? That's what he was doing. 
because if you sear it at one time all the fat will just melt because Japanese beef the fat melts at body temperature so room temperature will, will melt also so if you're gonna sear it at very very like high heat right all the fat will just gone and maybe you start with 100 gram maybe you only left like maybe 50 gram right so what he did was we call it we call it like temper the beef right so you cook it at the right temperature let it rest okay then cook it again let it rest and cook it again so it's almost the same similar style right. i think this is like medium rare yeah? almost rare yes because the beef is very oily so a bit of uh, bitterness, spiciness, uh, that kind of flavor right, actually offsets the oiliness of the beef. If it's just, it's just the beef itself, right, then it's a bit uh, too much. Uh. So all these other elements in uh, flavors, it give it not so like gelat, not so rich uh, 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 flavor. Flavorful. It's very flavorful, yeah. And like I say, this kind of beef, because it melts at a very like room temperature, right? So, actually it's very healthy, you know? Yeah, people think beef, if like this, is very uh, 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 unhealthy. Actually, Japanese beef is very healthy. And I, 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 I do a lot of uh, yuzu kosho with meat. I just feel that like this yuzu kosho is a little bit spicy. Uh. It's a uh, yuzu kosho is actually made up of like uh, yuzu, yuzu, right? Japanese citrus and of course the Japanese green chilies. Yeah, so maybe the this one, Maybe it's another kind of uh, recipe, right? So maybe Shai Wan needs to be a bit more spicy. Yeah. But actually, do you guys really care about whose food is better? Do you know, right? Dessert comes in the form of a Calvados apple brandy souffle. On the side, it also has an apple ice cream accompanying it for a nice balance of hot and cold. Souffle is a... Uh, I, I mean, I love any dessert actually. Light and not uh, wet inside. Some people do souffle, right? I was recently at the Three Star Michelin restaurant in Singapore, but I won't name uh, uh, which one. There's only two. So... <laughs> so the souffle was, we were, look, we were looking forward for the souffle, and then inside it was wet, as in the egg whites uh, were not distributed properly, you know, and it's like uh, eating raw egg white at, at the end of the day, you know, some parts were not mixed properly, so uh, that also, because people say, people say that souffle cannot be dry, it must be moist, and uh, you know, that kind of flavor, texture. But moist and uncooked is, is, is a totally different thing. Eh? His method of doing souffle is a bit dif different. I think he just used only egg whites. Because normally souffle, we, we add a bit of uh, cream patissier, which is pastry cream, to make it like stabilized. But I, I only see him only use uh, any pure egg whites. So I don't know, maybe what's the final, how the final dish come out. You can only see later. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be the dessert for you. Wow, oh, the grand finale, right? Yeah, it's a kawaru souffle. We're finishing with the uh, apple fuji vissoir. So uh, it's uh, like a uh, sous vide Japanese uh, apple with the uh, masako cheese ice cream and finished with the uh, apple jelly. And it's a cream patisse to make the souffle with the flavor of kawaru. Okay, chef. Thank you. Okay, please Thank enjoy yourself. So Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think for me, I don't, I don't fancy the, the texture. Yeah. It's uh, like I was saying, it's a bit too egg, egg whitey, like too much egg white. Yeah. Oh, well, I will get drunk eating this souffle. <laughs> so chef. Oh, very good. So how far uh, the food for me to you? <laughs> is, is it okay, acceptable? More, more than acceptable. We'll come back again if we were staying in KL. Oh, thank you, Chef. Thank you, Chef. The food was very good. Thank you. The food was, was very, very good, yeah. Thank you very much, Chef. And I was telling them, right, you know, nowadays, 
young chefs try to overdo things too much for like Instagram, you know, for all that stuff. But I think it shows that classics like this, right, will last forever, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, I should be I maintain myself as a classic preparation. You can see the way all preparations are very classic. It's all uh, te technique from the French cuisine. There, you know, like uh, and I use the munir style to, to warm the beef. No? Then keep on munir a few times. Then keep me in the warm area to enhance the temperature of that. Beef itself, uh, nice. So the method cooking just to enhance the more beefy flavor and taste. That is uh, the method of cooking. I think we need all the classic French cuisine. So. Uh, and the chef has tried to agree that it's a matter of cooking. I also feel like, uh, oh, this chef is still very classic with preparation. It still remains the same what I'm doing. Uh, life, this, this line always, uh, you don't stop or keep on learning and keep on find a way, keep on create something that you may not know how the result, but after you create, you taste it, you like it. So this is my, my, yeah, my idea. Yeah, correct, exactly. I agree with you. Yeah. I think in a degustation menu also, tasting menu, it's very hard to he did the spot on every dishes, right? So, but like he say, after the end of the meal, he's trying every day to make things good, perfect, and all that stuff. I think it's the same thing with me also. We are never happy of what we are doing right now. <laughs> yeah, we are trying to improve uh, ourselves every day. Eh? Like, I agree with you, yeah. As long it's good, right? It, 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 don't, it don't really matter, you know? It doesn't really matter. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank, thank you for the evening tonight. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Because really, I had zero expectation, you know. Before I came, I thought like, a bit like, you know, typical Singaporean, you know, I'm at KLA, fine dining, you know. You don't really expect too much. Suddenly, when you have the few dishes, wow. Totally, like, totally blew my mind, you know? The dessert is a weak spot in Chef Daniel's otherwise impressive menu, but it was an overall splendid dining experience for Chef Heikel and Madame Rafika at Sage. Sage has long enthralled visitors of the Gardens Mall with its menu and will continue to do so in time to come thanks to Chef Daniel's brand of haute cuisine that is as consistent in quality and flavour as it is imaginative. It is one born of true understanding of the ingredients and made unique with slight twists in a way only a very experienced chef knows how. Chef on Chef is brought to you by Martel. Drink responsibly. Thank you for turning into this episode of Chef on Chef. I hope you enjoyed this episode and send a chance to win a taste of the meal Chef Haika had a siege. First class is giving away dinner for two to two lucky couples. Visit www.firstclass.com.my to win.